Hi, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Can you all hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. last session uh, we have completed items uh, module transactions uh, today we will discuss item reports go to items reports uh, first report is uh, item listing from here we can generate uh, list of items you can select item uh, range of item or all items uh, from item category you can select item category uh, if you want to select one particular category you can select that or you can select all categories and uh, from item type you can select service item physical items or both items and uh, you can select the price list. If you want to add uh, additional details, uh, such as user defined fields, uh, you can take this option. And uh, you can generate the list of items report. From here, you can view item code, item description, item category, last cost, average cost, uh, exclusive price, inclusive price, gross profit my, uh, percentage, gross profit amount, quantity on hand, active or uh, whether it's a physical item or service item. If it is an active item, it will display yes. Uh, if deactivated or inactive item, it will display as no. Uh, then uh, if it is a physical item, uh, yes, uh, if service item, no. Okay, and service items, uh, quantity on hand will not display. And you can add that user defined fields. And this exclusive prices and inclusive prices from this price list. Okay, I think you can remember we can uh, create different price list. Uh, if you are if your company selling. Uh, selling uh, different customers at different prices you can create a uh, price list you can create price list from company change company settings general settings item settings and from this price list you can add price list and uh, when you are uh, creating customers you can select that price list from this uh, default price list and uh, you are creating items you can enter that uh, different price list prices okay like that you can complete that price list and uh, from this uh, item listing report you can select each price list and you can generate the report and now uh, you can generate that item listing report
okay uh, next we will move to sales by item report from this report you can generate uh, item uh, sales with cost of sales and gross profit okay first you need to select date range then uh, you can select items you can select item categories and if you want you can select sales account now uh, when you are creating items you can select that sales account Uh, this sales account you can select from this sales account filter option and also if you have uh, analysis code you can select that analysis code wise and uh, from item type you can select service item physical items or both items and uh, from style you can generate summary report or detailed report and uh, when you are generating the report, you can view average cost or last cost. And if you want to add uh, credit notes to the report, you can take this option. Okay. And uh, you can, by clicking view report, you can generate the report. Now, uh, from here, you can view item. item contains uh, item code and description then uh, quantity sold in this period total cost total selling price uh, gross profit amount gross profit percentage and you can view the grand total uh, this is a summary report uh, if you want you can generate that detailed report then uh, you can view each item uh, transaction wise report and each transaction quantity cost uh, total selling price gross profit and gross profit percentage and from here you can view that each item wise uh, total also Then uh, you can view that cost, you can change that cost basis, last cost or average cost. And uh, if you take this option, include credit notes. You can view this uh, minus stocks uh, that means uh, credit notes okay okay now you can generate uh, sales by item report
okay uh, next we will move to purchases by item report go to items reports purchases by item uh, from here also you can select the date range you can select monthly quarterly yearly or uh, custom dates or all dates then you can select items you can select item category and uh, you can select purchase account when you are creating item you can set purchase account for items is cost of sales account or purchase accounts and also you can create purchase accounts from uh, this item accounts and then account from here we can, you can create purchases account and uh, you can select analysis code wise and uh, you can select uh, item type service physical or both items and uh, if you want to include supplier returns to the report you can tick this uh, include option then uh, if you have you can still uh, you can view that uh, item wise transaction uh, you can view date supply invoice number supplier quantity purchased unit price and total purchased you can view that each item wise total and grand total purchases by item report
okay uh, next report is customer calls by item from here you can select items and uh, from active you can select active inactive or both items and you can select item categories you can select item type service item physical item or both items from report options you can select date range after you select the date range you can view that date range and uh, from style you can select summary or detail and status you can select uh, that accepted quotations uh, declined quotations pending quotations uh, expired quotations invoice quotation and all quotations item and uh, from here you can view that item quantity total cost selling price uh, gross profit and gross profit percentage now this is uh, quotation items uh, in the you can view that uh, items in the quotations okay from here you can view that the uh, uh, total cost, total selling price, gross profit amount, and gross profit percentage. And uh, if you want uh, invoiced or pending quotations. You can view what are the pending items in the quotation. Okay. Okay. And now you can uh, generate this customer quotations by item report.
okay uh, we will move to next report customer sales order by item now uh, from here you can generate uh, item reports which are included in the sales order uh, from here you can select date range and you can select items you can select item category and from style you can select detail or summary and from document status you can select pending sales orders invoice sales orders or all sales orders okay now uh, from here you can view each item sales orders uh, customer name uh, that sales order status quantity total cost total selling price gross profit amount gross profit percentage and grand total and uh, if you want uh, you can generate uh, pending sales orders item item report okay uh, now you can generate customer sales orders by item report
Okay, uh, next we will move to supplier purchase orders by item. Uh, you can select item, uh, you can select item categories, and uh, you can select item type, that's service, physical, or both items. And uh, from report options, you can select date range and uh, style you can select summary or detail from status you can select all purchase orders confirm purchase orders cancel purchase orders pending overdue or invoice purchase orders after that you can generate the report from here you can view summary report Uh, you can select, uh, you can view that uh, items, quantity and total cost and uh, grand total. Okay, uh, now you can generate that report, purchase orders by item report.
and uh, you can generate this report as uh, detailed also. You can view each item wise transactions, each item wise purchase orders, purchase order date, purchase order number, items, quantities, uh, unit price, and total purchase. Next, we will move to uh, item movement report. From here, we can view uh, each item wise movement report. From here, you can select item or item categories or item type. And you can select date range. From style, you can select summary or detailed report. Can view that uh, uh, item moment from here. Uh, you can view that transaction date, transaction number, uh, description of transaction, whether it's a uh, invoice or uh, customer invoice or supplier invoice and uh, you can view the supplier or customer and quantity okay uh, if it is a uh, invoice or supplier return it will display as minus and if you purchase or uh, customer return it will display as plus amount okay and from here you can view grand item moment And also you can view this report as summary report. Uh, then it will display a particular item movement in the uh, this period. Now here uh, in detail report, it will display transaction wise report transaction wise item movement and uh, in summary report it will be displays, display a uh, summary or total item movement okay now you can check this report item movement report
okay uh, we will move to next report item valuation report from this report you can generate a particular date item uh, balance of items and with the uh, item cost and uh, value of that items okay uh, you can run this report as as a date and you can select items you can select item category and uh, you can generate this report based on average cost or last cost and uh, if you want to extrude item with zero quantities you can take this option and uh, you can view the report now uh, from the, this report you can view uh, item code description item category active uh, and quantity on hand cost and uh, value of that item and uh, if you take this option exclude item with uh, zero quantities this zero value quantities uh, zero value items will not display and uh, you can view total value of this uh, your inventory items you can use this report for uh, stock taking or you can submit this report for uh, financial audits uh, for that item valuation report and also uh, if you correctly enter transactions uh, your quantity on hand always should be plus items and uh, if it is minus uh, uh, you have invoiced uh, without uh, stocks and uh, you can block that option uh, if you want to block that uh, item quantities fall below zero you can change it from this uh, company settings uh, go to company change company settings general settings item settings and from here uh, you can tick this second option do not allow item quantities fall below zero then uh, system will not allow you to allow users to uh, invoice uh, or uh, if you don't have uh, stocks or items in, on hand system will uh, not allow to invoice that uh, item and uh, you can generate this report as average based on average cost or last cost if you select average cost this uh, quantity or value calculate based on average cost quantity into average cost and if you select last cost uh, that value will calculate quantity on hand into uh, last cost price and also these reports uh, you can export pdf excel csv or you can print or email okay uh, now you can generate this item valuation report
Okay, uh, next we will move to price list report. From the price list report, you can view each items, uh, prices, selling prices. You can select a price list from here. You can select particular price list store, all price list. And uh, you can select items, item categories. And uh, from item type, you can select service item, physical item, or both item. And from display, you can select exclusive price or inclusive price. And uh, this report, you can view item code, item description, item category, item unit, uh, default price list, trade price, retail price, distributor price. And if you have uh, more price list, uh, you can add those price list also. And uh, if you want, select one price list. You can select one price list. Okay, and now you can generate this report. Price list report. Okay, uh, next report, item bundle report. From this report, uh, you can generate uh, item bundle report. You can select bundle items. And uh, from here, you can select price list. And you can generate the report. And uh, you can view that bundle item code. Uh, items include in that bundle item quantity, cost, uh, selling price, and uh, total exclusive price and total inclusive price.
okay now you can generate this uh, item bundle report Okay, uh, next we will move to item quantities report. From this report, uh, you can generate item uh, quantity on hand, quantity reserved, and uh, quantity available report. Now, uh, quantity reserved means now you can generate uh, or you can enter sales orders in this uh, system. And uh, if you want, you can reserve those uh, quantities in the system. Now, for an example, uh, you can enter sales order, customer sales order. And uh, you can select item. Now, uh, I think you can remember uh, if you want, uh, you can reserve those. Uh, items in the sales order you can set that uh, reserve reservation option from uh, general setting item settings and uh, if you take this option sales orders reserve item quantities then uh, when you are if you are entering sales order those quantities will reserve for that customer okay and uh, you can generate that uh, reserved quantities from this report items report uh, item quantities from here uh, you can view a quantity on hand a quantity reserved and quantity available okay uh, now you can generate this uh, quantity item quantities report Uh, if you want to check uh, what are the reserved quantities or reserved items, you can use this report uh, to generate uh, view uh, that uh, reserved items quantities.
okay uh, now we have completed items module i'll quickly go through this item module uh, you can create items from by clicking this add an item you can enter item code item description item categories and uh, you can create physical item or service item and you can create or you can enter opening cost opening quantities of that item and uh, you can select opening quantity as that date and uh, from item details you can enter uh, default price list prices and uh, you can select sales account uh, if you want to separately display uh, this particular items sales in the pnl you can create a different sales account and uh, you and uh, when you are selling those items it will uh, display in the pnl uh, or income sales income statement as a separate line and uh, like that you can create cost of sales or purchase account inventory account and item adjustments account and uh, if tax available for these item you can select a tax rate and uh, if tax not available you can select no tax and uh, you can enter price list prices by clicking this price list tab after enter transaction you can view this item activity from activity tab and from notes you can add notes to the uh, that item and you can enter user defined fields if you want to add picture to this item you can add a picture okay, uh, next uh, you can create bundle items if you are selling more than one item as a bundle uh, you can create bundle item then uh, when you select this bundle item at once all the other item also will display in the uh, invoice or other documents okay such as quotation uh, sales order customer invoice uh, supplier purchase order or supplier invoice i'll show you an example now uh, in this computer uh, bundle item you can add cpu speakers mouse keyboard and uh, you can enter quantity and uh, when you are select uh, in that transaction first uh, you need to change this uh, type to bundle after that uh, you can select item that bundle item then uh, all items will display uh, in the invoice or your transaction then uh, you can create item categories in transaction uh, if you want you can adjust items you can adjust a particular item or uh, as a grid you can change if you want to change more than uh, one item you can use uh, quick into grid and uh, from item code you can select the item code and uh, you can enter new cost and new quantity if uh, if you have assigned uh, analysis code you can select analysis code and uh, if you want to add uh, or if you want to adjust all items uh, by clicking this lower doll you can add all items to the grid and you can change uh, cost and quantity next uh, adjust item selling prices there are few options uh adjust selling prices adjust selling prices using quick entry grid and uh, copy from another file another price list from here you can change your selling prices based on selling price based on last cost or based on average cost 
next uh, if you want uh, you can change your opening balances from this special and also if you want you can renumber your item codes then uh, item report you can generate uh, sales by item purchase by item item movement report item valuation report and price list report okay uh, if you have any questions you can ask okay uh, next we will move to banking module when we are creating master file we have add a few bank accounts uh, you can add bank accounts from banking add a bank or credit card and uh, first you can enter bank account name now for an example uh, if you have uh, two bank accounts in same bank you can use the uh, first uh, bank name then uh, your account number uh, for identification of that uh, bank account name or you can enter that uh, for an example some part if you have some part bank two accounts you you can use some part bank zero one some part bank zero two or you can enter some part bank and that account numbers for bank account name then uh, you can select a uh, bank account category from here you can add uh, current account fixed deposit uh, petty cash account savings account like that uh, you can add uh, categories to the bank account then uh, default payment method from here you can select cash check credit card or eft uh, eft means electronic fund transfers Now, uh, if you select any uh, default payment method, uh, when you are entering transaction, that payment method will display in that transaction. Now here, payment method check, uh, because uh, we have selected that uh, default payment method as check. Okay. Then, uh, on the bank accounts, you can enter that bank account name, your bank name and uh, account number you can enter branch name and uh, from under branch code you can enter your branch code and uh, there are a few options active that means uh, that account is active if you want to later inactivate your bank account you can untick this option and uh, from default uh, you can default to a bank account now if you set a bank account as a default account now in this campaign is uh, sampad bank rs account as a default account and uh, when you are entering a transaction that account will display as a default account now here when you enter customer receipt that account display as default account and uh, if you haven't set any default account system will not display a uh, bank account then you need to select each time uh, your bank account now we will pick this option now uh, that default account will not display you need to select bank account from here this drop down menu now again i'll set uh, this account as default account
now uh, that bank account will display as a default account. Uh, you can set your default account uh, for a bank account. If you are doing uh, more transaction for a, in a particular bank account, you can set that bank account as a default account. Then uh, if you have activated multi-currency, uh, you can select currency uh, for that bank account. You can select uh, your home currency or if you have different currencies, you can select that different currencies. And when you select the currency, this uh, currency symbol also will change. Okay, then uh, you can enter your opening balance. And uh, if you want to add any notes to this bank account, you can add notes to that bank account. After that, you can save this bank account. Okay, and uh, you can create any number of bank accounts. And also, uh, you can create for your bank accounts and a petty cash account. And uh, if you want to maintain your PD checks, uh, post data checks you can uh, create separate uh, bank account for that uh, pdc or post data checks like that uh, you can create any number of bank account next we will move to bank and credit card categories From here, you can add categories. You can add bank account categories. You can enter description and you can save. Then uh, quick enter rule. Uh, from here, uh, you can enter, you can set a pay, then uh, system will uh, enter other details from uh, memorizing those transactions. Okay, now for an example, uh, if you type BC, now I have entered only BC. Uh, now here for BC, uh, that description set to bank charges and account set to uh, bank charges account. Now, when I'm into BC, system will automatically fill that description and uh, system will select the bank account. Uh, if you have regular transaction like that, you can set uh, quick entry rules. And when you are entering that transaction, then you need to enter the pay name only and uh, that transaction amount, other details will fill by the system. That bank, uh, the description and selection will fill by the system. Now uh, I have set a, another rule, uh, PWH and uh, set description to software renewal, set the type to supplier uh, with the selection as PW holding. Uh, 
now uh, when i enter pwh system will enter other details okay uh, such as description type uh, selection like this uh, you can set uh, that uh, quick entry rules for account gl account customer supplier transfers that transfers bank transfers and tax payment Then next one, uh, bank statement in role. From here also, uh, you can add, uh, now for an example, uh, if you are in uh, this uh, apartments, uh, now uh, in the, those apartments, uh, there may be a management fees or sinking fund like that there are regular payments and uh, sometimes uh, customer will pay to your office and pay or uh, customer will directly uh, transfer that their fees to bank in that case uh, uh, when you are uploading your bank statement you can set that uh, uh, details in this uh, bank statement mapping role and system will fill those details Okay, uh, and uh, when you are uploading this uh, bank statement, you can set this uh, bank mapping role. And also there are two options, uh, check for duplicate based on date and amount and uh, check for duplicates on uh, review transaction new and preview transaction uh, in this uh, bank transaction if you upload the same similar amount sometimes the uh, system will identify those things uh, those transaction as duplicate transaction and it will pop up a message
okay uh next uh i'll show you how to import that uh, bank statement and bank statement mapping rule uh, first uh, you need to create uh, mapping rule here you can select uh, that uh, selection uh, from type first you need you need to select the type from here and uh, you can select customer from here and uh, you can select uh, this description in the bank statement Okay, now uh, I have saved one uh, mapping rule. And uh, you can go to banking and uh, go to bank transactions. From here, uh, you can import by clicking this import bank statement. And uh, you can select csv and uh, you can uh, download that uh, example Okay, now uh, under description you can enter sleep and uh, you can enter a uh, date transaction date and amount And uh, you can go to that uh, import bank statement and you can select that bank, uh, the transaction bank statement you can select and you can import. Now here you can see this uh, one draws successfully imported. Now uh, I have selected, uh, I have actually, I have entered only slip in that uh, uh, bank statement, but from the system, it has uh, filled that uh, pay name, uh, description, customer, and uh, this amount. Okay, uh, you can check from your side also. We will uh, import again. Go to import. Uh, first, I'll show you that uh, file. Now, uh, in this Excel sheet, we have entered the transaction date description and amount and from uh, bank mapping rule we have said uh, now if uh, slit in that uh, description c 
from the system other fields will uh, fill by the system such as customer that uh, customer name uh, pay name uh, accounting display description those things will fill by the system now uh, you can go to that banking click bank import uh, import bank statement and uh, you can select that csv from browse uh, you can select that file name and you can import then uh, system will display one row successfully imported you can view this uh, 5000 we have entered will import to the system okay like that uh, you can set bank mapping rule and uh, system will uh, fill other details such as uh, customer supplier type and supplier customer gl account and uh, selection uh, from selection sub system will select that the customer or supplier and uh, it will fill that pay name and uh, description okay you can set this uh, bank mapping rule and you can import uh, bank transaction to the system okay okay those things uh, in addition to that uh, csv you can select that historic csv in that uh, Now, uh, previous one, uh, it has only date, description, and amount. Now, uh, if you have details, uh, uh, you can enter those details, uh, that transaction date, pay name, description, type. Uh, you can select uh, selection. If it is a customer, customer name. If supplier, supplier name if you are transferring uh, bank to bank you can select the bank account and if type is account you can select that gl account uh, if uh, type is tax you can select that selection and uh, you can enter reference number uh, tax type amount and uh, if you are using analysis code you can enter analysis code like that uh, you can enter transactions I'll upload uh, this transaction. Uh, go to banking, transaction banking. Click import bank statement. You can select a uh, historic CSV. Select the file and import file. Then uh, you can view that import details. And like that, uh, you can import uh, bank statement to the system. Okay, now uh, we have completed up to bank statement mapping role. Uh, next session, uh, we will start uh, from banking transaction. And uh, if you have any questions in uh, items or banking, uh, you can message or you can email us and uh, if you need any clarification please uh, comment uh, in chat box and uh, okay uh, okay uh, we will stop for today uh, thank you very much good night